Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your patience. Now we have arrived at that very important keynote address, and I'm going to take the privilege of introducing our keynote speaker to you, Mr. Bharat Shah. Now, Mr. Bharat Shah is a qualified rank-holding chartered accountant, cost accountant, and an MBA finance from IIM Calcutta, having topped the class in finance. And he comes armed with over 30 years of experience in the Indian capital markets, with deep interface in Indian corporate world. He represents comprehensive insights in Indian capital markets with strong emphasis on bottom-up investment philosophy. Ladies and gentlemen, he has considerable understanding of global businesses and stock picking is his special strength. The investment philosophy emphasizes buying only quality businesses, enjoying superior growth, but at reasonable valuations. I extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Bharat Shah, who's the executive director of ASK Group. Now, he's going to be sharing insights on how to identify a stage where businesses turn into a 100x possibility. So this is going to be very exciting. This session will be moderated by Mr. Ramit Jaiswani, who is the founder of Stallion Asset. He's a double charter holder and has successfully completed his chartered financial analyst from Virginia, USA, and chartered market technician from New York, USA. He has been investing in capital markets from the last 14 years. <laughs> And he is an active member with the Association of Technical Market Analysts and Indian Association of Investment Professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Bharat Shah and Mr. Ramit Jaiswani. And with that, a warm welcome to you both, to Mr. Shah and Mr. Jaiswani. Mr. Jaiswani, I'm going to hand over the proceedings to you now. It's all yours. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. My apologies. Hi, Bharat Bhai. Thank you so much for joining Hi. us. 40 minutes. Thank you. Good to see you too. 40 minutes, Bharat Bhai, is too less to know uh, and learn about 30 years of uh, investment experience of yours and how yeah, you thank you. It. My apologies. Hi, Bharat Bhai. Thank you so much for joining Hi. us. Thank you. Thank you very much. 40 minutes by is too less to know and, and learn about 30 years of uh, investment experience of your. Yes. Bharat Bhai, am I clear? Uh, yes, I think there is an echo coming. Right, right. Is it better now? Uh, yes, now it is better. Bharat Bhai, uh, the first time I met you was on 31st of August 2018, and that was the day I got my PMS license. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we meet again broadly three years later. My first question, Bharat Bhai, first of all, big honor for me to uh, speak to you again today. Uh, Bharat, Bhai, my... <laughs> Bharat Bhai, my first question is large investors who have a style similar to yours, uh, like Terry Smith, Warren Buffett, uh, who, who invest in quality, growing, consumer, monopolistic uh, kind of businesses. Uh, they have now about 50% of, like Warren Buffett has one stock, Apple, which is 45, 50% of his portfolio in technology. Terry Smith uh, also who, uh, has a similar style, has 50% odd uh, portfolio in multiple technology names. Uh, we have now technology names getting listed in the Indian stock market. Uh, these companies have created large <coughs> Uh, these companies are hyperscalers. Growth is not from a problem. Uh, like a GMB of Zomato is equal to what a Nestle does after 100 years of existence. Uh, oh, wow. Like when would you, at what structure, are you looking at these technology names and what will make you uh, buy them? Because they, they, they do not fall in that uh, traditional uh, way of ROICs, cash flows, and the managements are not very, uh, uh, like they don't have decades of uh, experience. So uh, I'm just understanding your framework for investing in these technology names. Oh, sure, uh, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, people like uh, Buffett invest like I do. That's a gross misnomer. Uh, Buffett is a legend and uh, we all remain uh, uh, usually, usually respectful in uh, inspiration of learning from a, a person like that. So uh, you can't really say that uh, uh, those kind of people invest the way I do. 
uh, it will be my humble tribute to a legend like Buffett and to learn from him. But uh, on the point that you made, uh, uh, I consumer companies do appropriately have many of the uh, many of the important factors which contribute towards superb long-term value creation. And uh, therefore, uh, it, it's, not a, uh, uh, it's not a question of investing only in the consumer names. In India, there are plenty of businesses where happy coincidence of many of these attributes exist. So chiefly, what are we looking for? First and foremost, uh, you want to look at the top quality management because uh, that is the starting point. You never want to compromise on that. Uh, uh, compromising with the bad management, so flirting with them uh, is a path to harakiri eventually. And more than 90% of the management so all over the world, I would say, do not pass uh, one or more of the key attributes required to be qualified as a good management. So good managements are so few. And to that extent, uh, to my mind, that is the first starting point. The second attribute that you are hunting for is uh, the quality of the business. Again, uh, very, very few businesses all over the world, uh, whether in India or internationally, whether listed or unlisted, whether large or small, all kinds, more than 90% of the businesses are either designed to fail or will produce mediocrity as an outcome or will be non-consequential result as an outcome. Only a single digit percentage of businesses of all kinds all over the world have got what it takes to create a value. So that's second. The third is the size of the pond or the size of the opportunity. More than the size of the fish, it is the size of the pond which is critical. Whether uh, 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 the fish is capable is a next question, but uh, that's not the first question before the size of the pond. Therefore, capability, uh, the size of the pond will determine uh, possibility of uh, or a range of outcomes and therefore, uh, that along with the competence of the management will lead thereafter to an important attribute that you want to hunt, which is growth, not necessarily highest in a particular point of time, but solid, predictable, sustainable, and uh, something that you can trust as a kind of a compounding machine kind of a growth. Therefore, that and finally coupled with uh, the quality of the growth, the capital efficiency, the ruggedness, the, the pricing power, the moats that makes the business an invincible entity. Those lot of quantitative and qualitative attributes about quality of the growth finally kicks in. So that growth along with the, <coughs> sorry, growth along with the quality of growth will lead to outsized kind of outcomes. Uh, ultimately, long-term growth is a great proxy for the long-term future returns, but the quality of growth is a way to lubricate the journey and aid a little bit further. Uh, and finally, uh, you wanna pick the margin of safety, which comes after all of this. Now, many of the, uh, the first ones starting the consumer technology business like Zometo, which is the first of the block in some sense, may not be entirely a consumer technology business, but uh, InfoAge uh, is a very successful example of an internet business, which has uh, done very, very well so far. And it has gotten into some of the consumer technology activities itself, uh, uh, may not be at a scale today, but hopefully sometime some of those activities will reach a certain scale and size. Now, uh, clearly uh, digital is here to be there. No business can afford to be purely physical. No business needs to be only digital. Ultimately, it will be a happy confluence of both physical and digital 
uh, one appeals to the head and other appeals to the ma- heart because digital part appeals to the rationality the convenience and uh, ease and at times pricing as well and the heart part um, uh, is more than uh, just any of those rationality so time to time you will go to a restaurant to celebrate and enjoy food and you will call for it over zomato you will go to the movie theater and enjoy the movie and you will watch it in home uh, in over ott as well so all businesses will have to be a um, uh, nice healthy kind of a uh, combination of both physical and digital that said eventually ultimately for every investment over a period of time now that length of time probably can differ depending upon the business to business uh, but eventually the economics of investment has to kick in and has to be reasonably be visible or reasonably confident that it will happen in some of them that economics is something that you can forecast within a shorter period of time in others like some of some of the new internet businesses that we are talking about it <coughs> it may probably take a, a longer period of time but whatever that horizon is over that horizon there should be meaningful probability of that happening uh, it converting into logical normal equation ultimately price is what you pay out today and uh, return has to be in form of the cash flows of the business over a period of time and the uh, time value of money equation between the two will settle the rate of return whether it is positive healthy or zero or negative and um, that equation one cannot get away from it so every business whether it is attractive and, um, and there is a lot of frenzy or following or whatever uh uh ultimately that equation has to settle and we have to have reasonable confidence as investor that that equation will settle at some stage if not today tomorrow or uh, whenever and um, when that equation settles uh, the time value of the money or the internal rate of return must be satisfactory for the postponement of the gratification because ultimately if the investing is a postponement of gratification you pay out something today in the hope of getting something larger tomorrow and that larger tomorrow has to be reasonably be certain has to be reasonably be large reasonably be forecastable and within a reasonable finite time period for that equation for to kind of uh, uh, work its way through so those uh, uh, those cannot be compromised on and those have to be there whether it is uh, so for zomato or whether many other businesses uh, that are going to get listed in the market uh, i i think eventually realistic probability of that equation happening and favorably happening has to be there so that would vary from business to business but clearly many of these businesses are opportunities many of these businesses uh, given the fact that now almost 65 70 uh, sorry 650 700 million people in india have some kind of access to internet digital part is powerful and the way the startup ecosystem is a phenomenally gathered piece especially over last one and a half years i think all a uh, potent towards the power of the data power of the digital technology and wedding it with various businesses to create some very happy outcomes so all those businesses are of great interest to me but equation eventually has to be worked out for each one of them very insightful but by basics remains the same uh, the businesses keep changing uh, look for large uh, opportunity sizes and probably managements who are able to uh, scale to that opportunity but by how do you look identify good managements there are about 74 odd uh, companies in last 20 years which have become 100 baggers since that's the topic today uh, out of 74 companies majority of these businesses pivoted from uh, some some older profit pool to a newer profit pool uh the tough part uh, in investing is uh, 
uh, understanding the capability of the management barangay and with your 30 years of experience in market uh what how do you judge the capability and integrity integrity you can judge by many factors but not just integrity capability as written on in your book of long term uh, uh wealth creation probably one of the best books out there uh uh i've read it four times so uh, how would you judge the capability of uh, the management uh, a complex issue but a very important one mm, first and foremost uh it's not a plug and play kind of a issue to be settled uh that you charge it uh, you pl- put it into the plug in uh, la behold uh, the power comes out and you get a clear answer there is no mathematical or easy way to get a clarity on the management quality secondly it is not even a short term issue because capability character uh, uh, foresight uh, many of these traits is not something that you can make a meaningful judgment in a very quick way it requires uh, those managements to be and to have been tested over different cycles of the business of the economy <coughs> now their own behavior during those periods of time and more importantly rather than what they said what they've done is something that you can unravel and figure out only over a period of time so no matter what you want to do but uh, these character issues cannot be figured out in a short period of time third therefore judgment of management one has to be patient about uh, when there is no way to expedite uh, human homo sapiens delivery if it takes 9 months it takes 9 months and by being impatient about it you create accidents and therefore there is we can't be in a state of rush to uh, feel uh, and to make a judgment on the management also i would say it is for them to prove that they deserve our trust rather than we automatically have to attribute belief about them or uh, confidence about them it is duty of the management and a duty of a business to prove that it deserves the trust and the confidence of the investors because at the end of the day there is limited money no matter what no matter how much money you uh, which is out there and you want it to allocate to the best and deserving ones and therefore i would say onus is on the management onus is on the business is to prove that they and they deserve the confidence we should not be in a state of rush because when we are in a state of rush we are likely to short circuit many of the important questions and we are likely to make mistakes and therefore uh, we should be little careful about making the judgments uh, fifthly Uh, you see errors of omission and errors of commission both are important issues to be dealt with but if one has to be one has to be mindful of, of something more i would say errors of commission one has to be much more mindful of errors of omission uh, uh, though not always very pleasant uh, but still it is comprehensible because no matter what you do and how however smart you are you can't get everything right and you can't identify everything right or at any rate at the best and the most opportune prices <coughs> therefore uh, if uh, one has to uh, or one is likely to have uh, a given number of errors made over a meaningful investment journey i would say uh, avoiding errors of commission are more vital and management errors uh, judging them is one of the important errors of commission that you can make uh, finally i think there are number of telltale attributes uh, 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 ethics and governance as well as capability uh, not just foresight and vision but also great ability to do a terrific job of execution because at the end of the day you don't need armchair philosophers you need people who will roll up their sleeves and, and get the job done it is also not about merely 
good capital distribution, uh, but also terrific capital allocation. Uh, um, uh, the culture, philosophy, institutionalization of the business, building uh, something which is a great lasting uh, capability. Many of these attributes uh, require uh, to be judged before you repose confidence about management. And uh, while many of these intangibles you can make meaningful inferences about if you're patient, you study those issues over a period of time and study them well, uh, I think uh, uh, there is a pretty good probability that you'll uh, get, uh, uh, I would say out of 100 times, 95, 97 times you'll make uh, good judgments on that if you are not in a state of rush. So, <coughs> uh, so all of that, I would say, ultimately, it's not a plug and play. You have to be patient, but there is a path. There is a way to make that judgment. And therefore, even for many new uh, businesses that are coming to the market, uh, uh, not just new to the market, uh, but uh, one is not had an adequate, uh, uh, one has not uh, got an adequate chance to evaluate them, judge them, understand them, uh, how they behaved in the past, uh, what has been their record. All that may not have passed uh, adequate critical scrutiny. And uh, therefore, even with the IPOs and others, uh, we have to be a little more careful. We have to be we have to be more patient as well, uh, so that you don't end up getting on the wrong side. So there is that opportunity and freshness of a new opportunity, which is an attraction always. And at the same time, you have to balance it with the consideration of not making some errors of commission. I think between the two, when we are mindful, we make a meaningful kind of uh, right uh, adjustment. So the moral is, uh, be patient while judging managements. Don't be in a rush uh, while judging management. See how they go uh, do by in cycles, uh, mostly the bad cycles. And then um, as ethics are important, uh, ethics are important, but more important is also the capability of the management. Is that right, Bharat Bhai? Absolutely, all of them. Right. <laughs> Bharat Bhai, my next question is, uh, knowing what you know today, what would have you told yourself uh, 30 years ago that that what would have you changed in you uh, 30 years ago knowing that you know now everything today no first of all uh, nobody knows everything uh, least of uh, that list will be i um, there are plentiful occasions when i get reminded of my own inadequacies uh, uh, mostly by myself but also uh, some good friends uh, time to time uh, remind me about uh, many failings and inadequacies. So uh, least of all, I uh, can hardly make a claim that I know a lot of things uh, 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 and certainly not all of the things. But I would say investing is a passion. It's a journey that you traverse. And I think it's a lifelong learning. Um, yeah, and I think not only that, uh, the very fact that, uh, you know, the wealth, the money, the fame, these are all byproducts of that journey. But really pursuing that journey with panache, enjoying uh, all those moments, uh, moments of trial and tribulation, moments of joy and ecstasy, and moments of sobriety and quiet elation, all those moments are phenomenal points of time for self-introspection, self-learning, and kind of improving yourself incrementally, little bit by little bit every time. And to that extent, uh, the hunger, the passion, what was 32 years back when I embarked on investing, uh, to be fair, I can say the hunger has not diminished a one B bit. I remain uh, as passionate, as devoted, and as hungry to understand a little bit extra nuance about anything. Uh, a company like, for example, Asian Paints, I've been 
uh, knowing for uh, 30 odd years and still uh, uh, every uh, uh, still um, i do not want to miss any opportunity and every chance to get to understand them better to get to know them better if not anything else just for the sense of satisfaction that you are dealing with something fine and worthy and knowing it better than better so to my mind it is it is that fire uh, which is still burning uh, which keeps me going money wealth fame all these are incidental they happen in any case if you are serious and passionate about uh, the journey of the investing that you pursue uh, those outcomes automatically will happen but to me those are not the most important end purposes of life i mean the sheer joy of traversing on the journey the sheer power it leaves you with inside and the light that it uh, shines within to me uh, those are far bigger uh, things to aspire and look forward to so that's what uh, i think the 30 odd year of journey still is bharat bhai a uh, very exciting uh, bharat bhai one question which has been that 100 bagger which has excited you the most uh, which has given you some uh, volatile lights uh, but uh, something which you still are very happy about so there are plenty of them over a period of time 100 bagger over any meaningfully long investment journey something uh, uh you are likely to uh, uh, come across but i would only say you don't predict 100 uh, beggars or multi beggars and they just happen uh more than the most astute and most intelligent selection it is the patience to stay in the game uh and uh, maturity to not walk out of the journey prematurely that i think is a bigger role to play to become something like a multi beggar whether it is a 50 beggar or a 100 beggar or more i think more than uh, you know most astute and most intelligent picking out something in a very foresighted way uh, i think it is the role of wisdom longevity patience and constant attempt to keep refining your thesis and your idea along that journey which is i think more critical uh, for those multi baker outcomes in terms of the names uh, i mean uh, one of the first ones in a relatively brief uh, period of time because it was unthinkable and therefore obviously it uh, it really boggled my mind as well when it happened that time i mean both investments like wipro and infosys both of them turned out to be more than uh, 100 times and in a in a it a kind of a speed which uh, left one speechless and uh, obviously uh, i remain probably in a state of revery or in a state of a kind of a sleep for too long before and when i woke up i realized uh, that i had uh, spent in that journey little bit too long and extended my honeymoon uh, at that valuation for too long but that realization don't after i got a slap from the markets uh, so after uh, getting really hard knock uh, one understood that something which becomes 140 or 150 times while on one end maybe i had stamina or patience enough to wait that long and not precipitate uh, uh, parting of the company with uh, that name but at the same time uh, when i think about it obviously uh, it um, 140 and 150 is not the real reason but basically valuation uh, did not make sense and it was important to understand that the valuation had lost all the connectivity to the reality so i must have been in a kind of a long uh, maybe revery or a sleep and uh, when i woke up it was a bit like a nightmare but be it as it may it still was a great lesson something like asian paints over the 30 years time 
one rupee in Asian pence has become about eleven hundred rupees, and um, it it just teaches you and tells you that how something patiently, something that looks like a normal business, a pedestrian almost like a business, which most people would regard it as like a commodity kind of an activity, but which it is not, and it's a serious mistake to understand it like that. How something which is prima facie unlikely to attract attention of most people is exciting or important enough, but sure staying with that investment for long run, I mean, mind blowing kind of outcomes can occur. A rupee converted to more than thousand times in a 30 years is something like a dream. In 10 years, uh, uh, 10, 11 years, Bajaj Finance has converted uh, something like that in a relatively shorter period of time with a dramatic journey has occurred. Uh, uh, each of these in a different way has been very, very powerful uh, revelations and learnings. Bajaj uh, Finance, uh, act of speed and agility and yet phenomenal governance and ethics and not to miss out on any opportunity and that very hungry mind to get everything at the same time do it in a very fine and very ethical way. Um, Asian paints the power of sheer compounding the longevity and uh, incredible things that come uh, when you uh, when you just remain with a good business and Infosys when Terrific growth with a terrific capital efficiency when they combine and when they are new businesses like they were in 90s. I mean, magic happens and magic happens in a hugely short period of time. So each one in a different way, mind blowing lessons and mind blowing uh, kind of uh, education. But how do you sell your businesses? You own the best businesses around. Uh, isn't it very tough for your capital location when you find new ideas uh, to sell something which you like? Uh, but yet, uh, like, how do you how do you say that A is better and B? It, this is the most difficult thing. Even I face this. I believe every fund manager, every investor faces this. How do you decide this is better and this is not so good? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, do you start with growth rates? Do you start with uh, uh, the ROICs or combinations or competitive advantage period is better your your? How do you go about it? Oh, uh, uh, or any name, whether the extant name in the portfolio or the new one to be included, all have to pass all those tests, and they all have to be continuing to remain on the on the right end of that curve quality of management, quality of business, the size of opportunity, the growth rate, the quality of growth, and uh, eventually a sensible price that you want to pay. So those are non-compromisable ones. But uh, I would say good businesses are so few. And therefore, even at a cost of appearing a bit paternalistic, we should have tough rules for exiting good businesses. We shouldn't do it in a temperamental way. We shouldn't do it in a quirky way. We shouldn't fall to the machinations of the market and force to part a company uh, of a good business. I mean, it, it can happen very easily, but thereafter getting back uh, remains a myth. It is impossible to get back into good businesses that you've parted. And when they prove you wrong uh, after parting, it becomes impossible psychologically to get back into that position. Therefore, we have to be very sensitive and the rules for exit have to be tough and demanding before we say we want to throw them out. Secondly, rule for including a new name should be even tougher. If it is only marginally superior to an existing name, I would say just for the marginal little incremental gain, it is not worth uh, sacrificing something that you hopefully have known for a long period of time, understood uh, well, and you don't want to give away, give up all that advantage in favor of something new, simply because uh, you feel kind of compelled by the market uh, motions or your own internal mind's uh, volatility. And therefore, new name 
can't be just marginally be better, but it has to be much uh, demonstrably, significantly more superior. Third, uh, typically, uh, I would not like uh, my portfolio to become like a zoo, where all kinds of animals, uh, from elephants to the tigers, to the mouse, uh, to the monkeys, everything has to be there. Uh, I, portfolio is not an animal menagerie. It has got to be chosen, handpick a few names. Each name has to have its own character, as well as the portfolio in aggregate of all those names itself must have its own character, which superimposes over and above the character of each name. And therefore, if any new name I like, perforce, uh, in all probability, I want to let go of something before I want to get something new. Uh, and, if, and you do not want to just keep aiding because you keep liking something and uh, uh, you can't keep building your harem and keep getting more and more twins in your uh, palace, you know. So that is something uh, I would be very loath uh, to do that. And finally, obviously, when something that you have chosen, uh, something has happened internally or externally, whereby uh, the character of the business on a long-term basis is materially obliterated or damaged, then obviously we have to part with the company. There is no scope for emotions there. Uh, 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 for whatever reason it may have happened, either one's own mistake or something has happened to the business, uh, whatever may be the reason one has to part with. At that time, choices are relatively simple because then, then you want to part with something and something new needs to be induced. But otherwise, uh, those, are the, uh, those are the typical thoughts uh, that traverse uh, my mind when I have to uh, think about overall uh, uh, retention. One final point I'll say, Nine times or 95 out of 100 times, good businesses, even if there are temporary disappointments, compelling looking disappointments, uh, inscrutable kind of challenges we think are characterizing those businesses, even then nine out of 10 times or 95 out of 100 times, good businesses don't disappoint you. They eventually turn in your favor. And that is simply because that is the basic definition of a good business, because it inherently is a character uh, to be able to obviate and deal with the challenges and to still overcome. And therefore, classic mistake to make is uh, when a great business temporarily meets with an adversity and markets react in a very exaggerated way. Um, if you are already an owner of the store, the classic mistake to make is to surrender it away. And if you are not an owner, then it's a greatest uh, multi beggar to be bought when a great business for quirk of the market and for temporary or in inconsequential impact, uh, there is an exaggerated reaction. It's a classic act uh, uh, to be locked into. Thank you. Very, very good insights, Bharat Bhai. Probably the best insights today. Uh, Bharat Bhai, we have just three minutes. I'll just go through a rapid fire. Uh, uh, Bharat Bhai, what do you think is the most challenging part in markets? Kya lena hai, kitna lena hai, kab bechna hai? I would say kya aur kaun se bhao mein lena hai. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, largest difference, Bharat Bhai, you see between 1990s and 2000s. The uh, 2020s, sorry. I think markets were a lot more inefficient then and markets were more prone to uh, temperamental behavior then. Markets have relatively become more efficient today, uh, relatively. Uh, and to that extent, uh, uh, it is a harder work uh, to make more returns from the current times than 30 years back. The biggest regret, Bharat Bhai, for this decade no regrets, only opportunities. <laughs> Rank the following things which are most important for wealth creation. I know you'll say all of it is not allowed. Growth, management, ROC, valuation. Management, ROC, growth and valuation. 
Super, super. The most exciting stock market book after of long term uh, wealth creation would be. Well, uh, like they say, in a kitchen there is rarely a single cockroach. Uh, as far as books are concerned, uh, whether investing or otherwise, there is rarely a single book. I mean, there are so many beautiful terms. But what top two, top three, top three, which you you reread? Well, conservative investors sleep well. Uh, mm, uh, Stocks for the long run by Jeremy Pigle. Uh, latest work, uh, an outstanding uh, treatise on multidiscipline understanding of investing. Got it. Got it. Bharat, my last question, you may prefer not to answer it as well, but it'd be good if you answer it. The next 100 bagger would be? <laughs> next 100? Uh, no, I would, uh, I would uh, give it a pass. <laughs> no That'll worry, be... no worry. Thank you, Bharat Bhai. Thank you so, so much for your insights. Superb as always. Look forward to see you very, uh, very, very soon. Uh, Bharat Bhai, any closing remarks on your side? Oh, uh, I will only say uh, we are at a cusp of uh, probably one of the greatest opportunities in this country. Uh, when the dust on the pandemic settles, I think uh, the rate of growth of economy, the power of the rate of growth, durability, longevity, and the character of that growth rate, along with many important reforms which have occurred over the last six, seven years with the GST, DERA, insolvency framework, being clean up, the recent farm reforms or the labor reforms, many, many, along with the power of digital journey and startup innovative system, which is kicked in. I think we, in the coming couple of decades, in the hands of great entrepreneurs, in the hands of the good businesses, in the hands of good investors, <clears throat> Opportunity for value creation, I think, is never more staggering and outsized uh, than before. Therefore, <clears throat> after 32 years in the markets and investing, I feel like a kid in a candy shop. Uh, today, I feel uh, the coming two decades uh, probably is one of the greatest periods of outsized uh, value creation and wealth uh, creation opportunity. Thank you, Bharat Bhai. Thank you so much for your insights today and always. I uh, look forward to see you soon. Over to you, Ashwarya. Thank you so much, everyone, Thank for you. joining us here. Bye-bye.